Hello everybody, this is Wednesday's Word with Pastor Wendy. Today is August 21st, 2019, and we are going to share tonight on Forgive Much, Love More. That's the title of today's message, Forgive Much and Love More. You know, I know people are joining in. Hi David, hey Kayla. I know there's going to be more joining in, but I'm just going to welcome everybody corporately tonight. We're going to open with prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you so much for the word that you gave us, Father, that is Jesus in the written form. We thank you, Father God, that we can study to show ourselves approved unto you. And Lord, that you just teach us through the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. I just thank you for this lesson that you birthed in me tonight, Holy Spirit. And I pray that those who hear will have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Bless this word. Speak through me, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Bless those who hear it this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. So again, welcome. This is Forgive Much and Love More. And you know, the word... The Word is God. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And forgive, forgive. Forgiveness is love. It's love in action. And as brothers and sisters in Christ, what do we owe one another? That's a question that we want to dive into tonight. What do we owe one another as brothers and Christians as Christ, in Christ? In John 13, verse 34, Jesus has said, As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And we've been preaching about that word love for quite a while now. And we'll never exhaust it. Hello, hello, hello. We will never exhaust teaching and preaching on love because God is love. And without love, we cannot show the world that we are Christians. Without love, we cannot, we cannot have fellowship with Christ because He is love and He's supposed to be in us. Amen. So the Bible tells us in 1 John 4, verse 19 through 21. So let's turn there. 1 John 4, 1 John 4, verses 19 through 21. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that we love because he first loved us. And if anyone says, I love God, but they hate their brother, he's a liar. And if you don't love your brother who you see, you cannot love God whom you, whom you do not see. And so this is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love one another. We have to love one another. And love is an action. God is love and he demonstrated his love to us that while we were yet sinners, he, he sent Christ to die for us. He demonstrated his love. So love is an action. Love is God, but love is demonstrated. Amen. So again, the question before us, as brothers and sisters in Christ, what do we owe one another? Surely, in verse 1, 1 John 4, 21, surely we should love one another as we read earlier in John 13, 34. Surely we should love one another. And, but we should serve one another. You know, the question I asked is, what do we owe one another? Well, we should love one another. We should forgive one another. We should serve one another. Galatians 5.13 tells us that. Galatians 5.13, and I'll turn there real quickly. I'm going to be throwing out some scriptures to y'all tonight. And that's okay, right? Because we need the Word of God. We need the Word of God. So, for we were called to freedom, brothers, only don't use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, serve one another. So, that's one of the things we are called to do, is to serve one another. Amen? And then in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 15, we should be kind to one another. That's just a simple thing. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Tanya. That's just a simple thing, is to be kind. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Kindness, gentleness, patience, goodness, self-control. So we should, hey Brenda, we should be kind to one another, amen, as Christians. That's something that we do owe one another, is to be kind to one another. And then in 1 John 1, verse 17, the Bible tells us we should have fellowship with one another. There's so many people who say, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Well, 
there's a lot of these scriptures that tell us things that we should be doing. And so we need to be able to have fellowship with one another. We can have fellowship in our homes. We can have fellowship at the beach. We can have fellowship anywhere we're gathered together. But these are things that we do owe one another. Amen. First Peter 4 verse 9. We should offer hospitality to one another. Invite people into your homes. Go to their homes. Do life together. This is something we owe one another as part of the body of Christ. You know, we are part of the body of Christ. We are Christians. We love one another. We're supposed to forgive one another. Amen. So that's something so vital. And then it says in Galatians 6 verse 2 that we should bear one another's burdens. Don't just let your fellow brother or sister in Christ deal with what they're dealing with on their own when you have the ability to lighten their load. You know, if you see somebody struggling carrying a whole armful of, of groceries, are you not going to offer to help them carry those groceries? You are. That's a kind thing to do. It's a Christian thing to do. It's a loving thing to do. So if they're carrying another burden, maybe, hey, Michael, if they're carrying an emotional burden or a physical burden, or a spiritual burden, should we not help carry that too? The Bible says we should in Galatians 6 verse 2. He tells us we should bear one another's burdens. And then it says, and thus fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. And then in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 18, we should encourage one another. You know, let's, the world is hard enough. Hey, Ron, the world is difficult enough and mean enough and cruel enough and hateful enough. And the world's way is to tear each other down, tear each other to pieces, steal from each other, push people down to get your promotion and step on top of them, throw them away. This is not what God's people is supposed to be. We are supposed to encourage one another, the Bible says in First, first Thessalonians. 4 verse 18 encourage one another love one another spur each other forward with love and good works the bible tells us and then there's an accountability and this is something a lot of christians really don't like to hear but it's true it's the word we should be accountable to one another we should hold each other accountable we should have spiritual accountability to one another and the bible says in james 5 verse 16 that we should even confess our sins to one another amen we can't forgive each other of sin. Only Jesus can do that through God, and, and he has. He sent Jesus. All we have to do, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The burden is on us to ask for the forgiveness, but then it's the responsibility of Jesus to do the cleansing and the forgiving. However, this verse in James 5 or 16 is talking about accountability with one another. It says we should confess our sins to one another. Let's go to one another and say, you know what, man, brother, sister, I am so sorry. I made a mistake. I should not have said that. I should not have done that. I was not thinking. I was not walking in love. Will you forgive me? That's confessing your sins to one another. Don't stay hurt. Guys, we can't stay in the hurt and stay be blessed that way. It doesn't work that way. You know, so to go back to the title of this lesson tonight, forgive much, love more. Forgive much and love more. See, forgiveness, forgiveness is an act, it, uh, forgiveness is a lot of inaction. It's love in action. Forgiveness is love in action. And when we love one another, we have to think about that word love. What does that word love mean? really mean when I say forgive much love more and to forgive one another and when I say forgiveness is love in action well we know in first Corinthians 13 that love is patient and love is kind and love does not envy or boast and love is not arrogant and it's not rude and it doesn't insist on its own way the world does the world is arrogant the world is rude and the world envies each other and boasts of their pride and their accomplishments. The world is not kind. The world is irritable and resentful, but love, God's love in us is not any of these things. Love bears all things. Love believes the best of all people and all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Love never ends. If I say I love you, and then six months down the road, we have a, a disagreement, that does not mean I'm gonna stop loving you. It just means I disagree with something and that's okay. Healthy people do disagree with each other from time to time. 
that's okay. What's not okay is to be hateful about it. What's not okay is to be hurtful about it. But love, it's okay to disagree with one another. I had a conversation in my living room yesterday with a dear sister who I love and respect, and we had a disagreement on a few things, and it's okay. We agreed to disagree. There's things that she thinks that I don't, and vice versa. And that's okay. That's part of being human. It's part of having your own unique personality. <laughs> Amen. But love never ends. Love does not end. You can't just love somebody today if you really truly love them unconditionally and not love them tomorrow. Love is eternal. Amen. And we know that love, according to 1 Corinthians verse 13, chapter 13, love does not keep a record of wrong. Love forgives. Amen. So go back to the title, Forgive Much and Love More. I want to read about a story tonight, and this is going to take the most of this, the rest of this evening, about this Forgive Much and Love More. This is one of my favorite, hey Jeanette, I love you, I miss you. This is one of my favorite stories of love and passion and worship and praise. And it's in Luke 7, 36 through 50. And it's about a sinful woman who was forgiven. And most of you are familiar with this, but maybe some of you are not familiar with this. And tonight might be the first thing, but I'm just gonna read it right out of the Bible. Then one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house. He went to this person's house that most people don't respect, Jesus did. And he sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box of fragrant oil. And she stood at his feet behind him and she was weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears. And she wiped them with the hair off of her head. And she kissed his feet and she anointed them with this costly fragrant oil. And now, when the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw this, he spoke to himself and he said, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. You know, that man was pretty judgmental, would you not guess that? But Jesus answered him and said, Simon, I have something to say to you. So Simon said, teacher, go ahead, say it. And so Jesus proceeds and he says, there was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other owed 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, Jesus said, which of them will love him more? And Simon thought and he answered and he said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And so Jesus said to him, you have rightly judged. And then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house and you gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair that was on her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. Jesus says, you did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. And therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. So this is where I get my title of tonight's message, forgive much, love more, like this woman. And then he said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. And to those who sat at the table with him, he began to say to themselves, who? They all said this, who is this who even forgives sin? And then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And now you can read this story also in Mark chapter 14 and Matthew's chapter 26. But I pulled this this chapter out specifically because it teaches that her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. 
and thus the title of this story tonight, this lesson, Forgive Much and Love More. We can see here that there's responsibilities that we have as believers, as brothers and sisters in Christ. We're supposed to be united. We're supposed to be one body, amen? Can the left leg walk in a different direction than the right leg? I'd like to see somebody try that and see how far you get. It just doesn't happen. You have to agree, and we have to walk walk together, and we must forgive one another, and we must love one another. There's things that the scripture teaches us that we are to be to one another. These are the things that we should do lovingly. It's not a requirement. Some of them are uh, commands, though. God tells us that we should love one another. It is the greatest command to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We are to love one another, brethren. We are. But most I wanted to share tonight in this lesson that we should forgive much and love more. There was one of Jesus' disciples who said, how often should I, how many times do I need to forgive? And Jesus said, 70 times seven. That's a lot of times. And who's gonna keep track of all those many times that you forgive somebody? It's not the number of time. It's the idea that if we sin and we expect God to forgive us, then we should be willing to forgive others who sin and be willing to forgive others who sin against us, amen? We should, we should forgive one another because we have been forgiven. And I want us to really focus on that. Tonight, you know, we stand before one another. I may not be in the same room with you, but you're listening. And we should love one another. We should forgive one another. We should be at peace with one another as the body of Christ. We should not be the way the world is and have division among us. We should not hold on to offenses from people. You know, we need to love people and respect people to be who Jesus has called them to be as the piece of the puzzle that only they can be. And we need to focus on the piece of the puzzle that only we can be. We are unique. We are uniquely made. We have our own personality. We have our own giftings. We have our own place in the body of Christ, and we have our own part to play. God has a special plan for each one of us, so we shouldn't be worried about what other people do or don't do. Love them. Bless them. Pray for them. Forgive them, and go on. Forgive much and love more. Amen. And I just want to share this song. And my voice is very rusty because as many of y'all know me from years and years and years, now I used to sing and solo and help lead. But it's not about the quality of the voice. It's about the message of the song. And this song, you're going to hear in just a second. Let me turn it on. It goes with this message. Hallelujah. And it's Alabaster, the Alabaster Box. Jesus. Just hang in there. <laughs> She stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for kind. Still on she came through the shame that flushed her face. Until at last she knelt before his feet. And though she spoke no words, everything she said was heard. As she poured her love for the master from her box of alabaster. And I've come to pour my praise on him my goal for Mary 
these alabaster box. Don't be angry if I wash my feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair. You weren't there. into a little treasure box I thought I had found until the day when Jesus came to me and healed my soul with the wonder of his touch so now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of I've been Jesus, I come to pour my praise on you like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Jesus. Don't be angry if I wash my feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair. My hair. You given me to share with you. Forgive much, love more. Don't keep a record of wrong. Forgive somebody who has hurt your feelings. Forgive somebody who has offended you. Forgive somebody who's done wrong to you. Go to them and try to restore your relationship to reconcile. Because if we're truly the body of Christ, we have to walk together in agreement and in unity. So I pray that this has touched someone's heart tonight. I know the Holy Spirit has blessed me when he gave me this message. And I know when I sit at the feet of Jesus and when I just cry out to him and thank him for forgiving me and for loving me and being my Lord, there's no place I would rather be than at his feet and just pouring out my praise to him. And so let's do more and more of that and less and less of tearing each other down. Amen. I love you, and I hope this has blessed you. In Jesus' name, good night.